What's happening, you rock and roll kiss maniacs? You got Steve Brown from Trickster, sometimes Def Leppard, Tokyo Motor Fist, Rubik's Cube, and the co-producer, co-writer of Ace Frehley's brand new spectacular album, 10,000 Volts. And we are here, and you are listening to my good friends, Tom and Zeus. This is the Shout It Out Loud cast. Turn it up. All hail, all things kiss. Rock and roll all night, and shout it out loud. Cast every day, people! Oh, boy. Here we go. Oi. I'm pressing the button. Star Broker Simmons. Star? Is that what he does? Stop shouting. I need He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh, no. Here come the kiss times. Is that a positive thing? Okay. All right. I'm going to grab me a nice cold mellow Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Because fuck them. Six one seven five five zero. You do? Hey, fucko. Do you like this? Settle down. Hello. Hey, what's up, there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus with another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode two sixty eight. March Madness preview. ARC Song Madness. Yeah, this is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, so it's a kind of a crossover episode because it's the Shout It Out Loudcast March Madness tournament that we do every year, but we're kind of crossing over with our album review crew sidecast. And uh, we're going to get into all that. We're going to preview the bracket. And uh, I think this is definitely going to be a little bit more interesting than some of the KISS tournaments we've had in the past. Who's... Yeah, this one is going to be... Who hell knows yep. what's going to come out? And we'll get into all of that. Yep. But as we always do, we go back to last week's episode and we give you guys our feedback. And uh, we last week we had the great Amit Zappa on the show. And Tom, we did a poll. We were looking for some kind of interesting tidbit to do a poll. What yep. did we come up with? Yeah, so we figured this was kind of, anytime we do an interview, sometimes it's hard to come up with a poll, but we always try to pull songs from the interview or songs that we talked about or that were the guest favorites or whatever. So this got a little interesting. Four very different songs that were talked about during the interview with Ahmet Zappa. Great Expectations, She's So European, I Was Made for Loving You, and Black Tongue off of Gene's solo album, Asshole. So I Was Made for Loving You, 50%. She's so European at 30, Great Expectations at 15, and Zeus, I think me and you with a 6% at Black Tongue. I like uh, that song. I love it, too. It's fun, man. Oh, it's not a Kiss song. <laughs> Please. Jessica McCauley. This is, seems like a new, uh, a new one here. Okay. I don't remember this name. Great podcast this week. Kiss fan my whole life. I said there has to be a podcast. Yours came up, and I spent a week catching up. Wow. Very cool, Jessica. Welcome to the party. I hope we didn't offend you. Hooked on Sonic's podcast, our buddy Bruce Foudy's podcast. I almost picked She's So European mainly because of the fatigue factor of I Was Made for Loving You. But while She's So European is a deep cut, it's just not a great song. (gasps) Oh, dude, (laughs) come on, man. I used to agree with that theory. That's a good song. Let's see what some people have to say about the episode itself. Our buddy Nige Savage, great episode. Rock Tales gets an immediate follow from me. Our buddy Tom Dust, we love him. Thank you. Intro music man, Tom Dust. This episode is absolute gold. Frank's incredible talent, intellect, and humor certainly was passed on to his kids. Zeus is absolutely correct. He was the ultimate Renaissance man. Settle down, Paul. Mm. I love the deep dive into Black Tongue. It's absolutely the highlight of the album. West Beach, our buddy, great episode. Never knew he was such a big Kiss fan. Hard for me to believe he's 50. I always remember him as the youngest Zappa. Ah, well, he's the man. Our buddy Steve, it's just a sign of how far you guys have come since you started that we are no longer amazed at the big names that you get. They aren't interviews. They're more like chats. 
Every episode is unmissable, and we always eagerly await the next one to see what you bring us. Well, thank you, Steve. Much appreciated. And Zeus, that's what we got for Twitter. Okay. On the book of face, uh, we got one here that is from our friend Chris Hall. Yeah. Great episode with Amit Zappa. If ranking the four solo albums were ever to be added as a sixth full-time Murph question or Murph plus one, I would support that. I judge people based on how they rank the solo albums. It might be a good one, but sometimes we're a little worried that maybe they're not that big of kiss cards that it wouldn't work. But I will agree with Chris. I, I judge people on a, on a few things, and one of them is where they rank the Kiss albums. Good call, Chris. <laughs> okay. John Kozis, good interview. I didn't know who Amit was until this interview. You guys never failed to amuse me, so I gave it a listen. Was pleasantly surprised with the episode. Okay. Nice. Uh, Roy Jordan, another fun interview. I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with Frank's music, but as a music fan, I'm aware of his influence on many artists that I listen to. Also like seeing all the love for Gene's album. Can't wait for Tom and Zeus to review Gene's asshole. (laughs) Yes. Isn't that how we say it? That's how we say it. Okay, let's switch over to loud casters. Charles Eaton. Ahmed is a very cool dude with great depth of knowledge perceptions in lifetime and love for kiss his phantom the park memory of watching on tv is my first kiss memory as well i'm deducting a few cool points away from amit for thinking great expectations top 10 however tom keeper of the shed chief zeus i'm not chief that's G- uh chief jeans <laughs> asshole and kiss tards everywhere thanks for making my saturday mornings at work fun nice Derek rolando since I'm also heavily into Frank Zappa and follow all siblings' exploits, it's awesome to see these two worlds collide. Yep. A George divided against itself cannot stand. <laughs> oh, the two worlds. Yes. Great. Joey Romanik, is it possible for the guest to have the comment of the week? If so, I'm nominating Ahmed Zappa's black tongue on Gene's asshole. <laughs> God, we knew that that was going to be a problem as soon as we said it. And by the way, how are those jeans coming along with this humidity? Are you able to get that iron and just straighten those out, buddy? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Daniel Holocuster, great episode. I was a big Dweezil Zappa guy because I saw him on some special on PBS when he was 14. It was an R of his shredding. Then he was in the Aussie video. Yep. Shout of the dark. And on MTV. It's awesome to see Ahmed as a super cool dude and massive Kiss fan. Falling asleep at Diving Down Tour, then getting off at Jack Daniels backstage at age seven. It's a pretty much, that's a pretty big boss move. Yeah. Your buddy Aaron Nirenberg says, sorry, guys, I love Waffle House. You don't have to apologize. We didn't say we didn't like Waffle House. We just said it's, uh, I think its reputation precedes itself. Put it that way. Over on YouTube. Uh, many thanks for asking about Black Tongue. I've always wondered how Gene and Frank, of all people, hooked up. That was amazing. Thank you. Chris Flood says, I kept checking time saying, please go on what an interview. You got three more hours with that guy. The Andy Cat Fries and Silly Putty, you guys, are too good. I the great about that. Yeah, the great Marty White. Uh, when I was in college, I went to the dirty movie section of our video store. There was a movie called Black Tongue on Gene's Asshole. <laughs> now I know the reference. Thanks, guys. Love it. Uh, Tom, I'm going to hand it over to you. But before I do, I just want to give people a heads up. So on Friday, uh, he last Friday, actually, Ahmed had a live show surprise because he wanted to get Sebastian Bach on his show. And he called him on the previous Friday, uh, Thursday show when he goes live on his uh, Rock Tales uh, podcast, which is live on YouTube. And he left a message for Bach. Next thing you know, the next day, he puts up that Sebastian's coming on live, and he's been trying to get him on for a while. They're buddies and shit. So Sebastian Bach was there, and uh, I'm friends with the producer, Richard, and obviously now we're friends with Ahmed. They're like, call in. So I called in, and uh, I got in uh, with Sebastian and Ahmed, and I was able to ask them, which song or deep cut did you want to hear on the uh, end of the road tour? And needless to say, Sebastian does things that only he can do, and it's a lot of fun. I'm hearing it's going to be out 
as the premiere episode on this Friday, which is yesterday when you're hearing this episode. So check it out, Rock Tales. Uh, when he has Sebastian on, yours truly will call in and uh, support our friend. Anyways, Tom, over to you, buddy. All right, let's take a quick peek at Instagram. We got a comment here from Tuo Hylium. I, I don't. There's no spaces, so I don't know where the words start and end. Uh, but anyway, sorry about that if I'm saying it wrong. I knew I was in for a good one the second this dude started talking. He is so right about constantly having to defend yourself as a Kiss fan. People hate this band so much, but it's just about saying fuck it and having fun. At the end of the day, how angry can you really get at the band that literally sings a song called Love Gun? Kiss may be goofy, but they're a hell of a lot more interesting than some of the other boring, predictable classic rock bands that society tells us we're quote-unquote supposed to like. I cracked up when he pulled rank on all of us and championed great expectations, something I never thought I'd hear anyone do. He should battle Sebastian Bach to see who is the number one ultimate Kiss fan. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, and then let's blow through a couple emails here. Our buddy Mike H. He's uh, pulling some quotes at Tom, quote, sorry, Denise, I'll let you blow me. Me <laughs> pulling over to clean coffee for my windshield. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mike. I'm glad I made you laugh. Thanks, Denise. Dan Hool, also known as Dan Hool non-mutant. I like how he, he's part of that now. Got to be honest. I know who Dweezil and Moonzappa are, but I had never even heard of Ahmet before. But this was such a fun listen as far as him being such a Kiss fanboy. And it cannot be understated how cool it is to listen to an interview where they have a nice, clean connection and not some static-filled phone line. My wow. two main takeaways from this specific. Tom is stupid and wrong, oh. both at the same time. And don't talk shit about expect great expectations, or you'll get prison shanked by Ahmet. Oh, gee, Dan, stupid and wrong? Come on, dude. You deserve better than that. And we'll finish up emails with one from our good buddy, Rudy Duff. Hey, TNZ, I'm listening to the Ahmet interview, and when he said Dynasty for favorite album, this popped into my head. That Dynasty and Unmasked are to kiss as what Rubber Soul and Revolver are to the Beatles. They could each be double records and all the songs could be interchangeable. Love you, fellas. First of all, I'm not a Beatles fan, so I don't know anything about Rubber Soul and Revolver. Second of all, as much as I love Dynasty and Unmasked, they're very different albums. They're similar, but also very different. Okay. Okay. And that's what we got from for email. Zeus, you're going to finish up feedback with something that you got for us. Yeah, I'm just going to go with uh, comment of the week here. It's on YouTube. And this is from Low Body Fat 6707. Love this interview. Amit is an awesome dude. I watch his podcast. All your personalities mesh perfectly. Guests like these all make for an entertainment show. You guys are by far the best this podcast well low body fat for speaking truth uh you my friend are comment of the week good answer good answer I like the way you think i'm gonna be watching you <laughs> oh man thank you you should also get comment of the week because of your username low body fat <laughs> i don't know I don't, I don't know dude you're listening to this show and you're a kiss fan I'm challenging you on the low body fat. Yeah, um, you certainly are not a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. That is uh, great. Much appreciated. And we thank you. And yep. like we normally do, Tom, we always want to thank our Patreon family. And yep. we have another person to thank. And that is the previously mentioned Bruce Foudy. Yeah, Bruce. We love Bruce. He's got a cool podcast called Hooked on Sonics. Check him out. Very cool guy. And yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. So Bruce joins us as a demon tier member. The highest of the four tiers. Much appreciated. And Bruce is joining the Patreon family. And some of you guys will see that a lot of this pool that we're doing in the March Madness, Patreon helped us out. So Patreon gets involved in the March Madness. They get involved with the song selections for Mar March Madness. They just got their album picked, which we just released, and that was Diary of a Madman. That was the Patreon pick. Uh, yep. They get uh, involvement in the Friday flashbacks, the polls, 
Uh, they get merch from us. I just mailed out a T-shirt for Bruce. The stickers, feedback, involvement, uh, video chats. Whatever we can do, we try to make sure that the members in the Patreon family feel the love, and they do. And it's a fun fucking group, okay? If you want to join, please go to our website where you'll see the, the link on the landing page. It'll just say Patreon. Click on that. And then find the tier that fits your needs. I mean, they, they go as little as $3, and that's the cat man. Although I thought he should be the highest tier. I got outvoted, um, <laughs> even though there's only two of us. Or you can go all the way up to the demon tier. Each tier has different uh, perks, uh, and it helps us out. That's the biggest part of this. We appreciate it. It's there to support the show. So if you are somebody that wants to support us, wants to contribute to keep the show going, to keep the show fresh, to keep the show up to date and kicking ass and still taking names, please come and support us through Patreon. That's the way we are supported. And that's the biggest thing that you can do for us to help the show grow. So thank you to Bruce. Thank you to the Patreon family. We love you and we appreciate the support. Absolutely. Bruce. Thanks buddy. Uh, appreciate the support and check out his podcast again, hooked on Sonics S O N I X. Thank you, all you Patreons. It's a blast, and we can't be more grateful for the support that you give us, the continued support that you've given us, and we're excited. We just did Diary of a Madman, as uh, Zeus mentioned. That was the Patreon pick. You guys were heavily involved in picking some of the seedings for our brackets that we're going to discuss in a bit, and there's so much more that we want to offer and give back to you guys, and thank you for your support. So please check us out, patreon.com. Click on the link on our website at shoutoutloudcast.com or download the app and search for us. Tom, what we do next is we go to Kiss World. Uh, I don't know how much time we have to fit it all in, all the shit that's happening, right? The Kiss World is like Wally World, closed. <laughs> the only thing that's going on, really, is Gene's got a tour he's coming up with, you know, preparing, but it's not going to be in the U.S., unfortunately. And then Ace has got a tour coming up. He's got something big at the Rome Capitol Theater on Friday, ap- April 12th. So if you're around that area, go check it out. I think he's... Uh, gonna play with Angel and Bad Marriage. I don't know who that is. Bad but, uh, Marriage. Bad Marriage is actually a Massachusetts band. A woman I used to work with knows guys in the band. They're actually turning into like a big deal now. Really? Wow. Yeah, they're 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 from Mass. Yes. Well, let's see. You know, you can go catch Ace at that place there and see if he's got any of the new songs from the album out there. I'll be yep. curious to see what his set list looks like because all the shit that he got before. About not putting those songs. I hope he puts some of those songs in. It gets the fans a chance to hear them. So. Yeah, it's kind of hard to release a new album and not at least play one or two things. <clears throat> Kiss. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, so another piece of news is our buddy Bruce Kulik <laughs> is going to be coming to our neck of the woods in Massachusetts in June. There is an event called the New England Super Mega Fest Comic Con. Uh, that's a really long way of saying a bunch of dorks are going to get together. Um, I've been to I've been to a few. We went to a horicon last year and hooked up with Jericho. Uh, Bruce is going to be at this one, and uh, Zeus. I want to share some other very exciting news about who's going to be at this comic con. Okay, Will from Land of the Lost celebrating the fiftieth anniversary of the TV show. I don't, I don't even, I mean, I kind of remember that show, as a kid, <gasps> but it, it's nothing that I would be like, even rem- like if I saw him, like I would go out of my way being so uncomfortable, cringy to say hello to them. Cause I don't even know. Like, so you're not going to okay? dress up as like a, you're not going to dress up as like a slee stack and go say hello to Will from Land the of the fact Lost. That you know that. Oh, dude. How do you not know that? How do you not know that? I'm going to fucking try to find the, the, the cast from Danger Island from Banana Splits. Will well, they're they actually going to, if, if you think, if you think that Land of the what, Lost, what's is his not, name? Chongo, whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> uh oh, Chongo. <laughs> well, if you're not excited about, uh, Land of the Lost, I got news for you. The cast of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters are going to be there too. Dude, come on. Give me something. Are you kidding me? That's like Dork Central. Who gives a fuck about that? Of course it's Dork Central. I just... Okay. Sid Croft from Sid and Marty Croft, the guy that gave us all these all these drugged out shows. Bruce Kulik. Yeah. He's obviously going to be... I, I I love Bruce. I'm not quite sure how he hey fits guys, in with this. Bruce Kulik. Yeah. I'm going to be the... 
I'm going to be the special uh, celebrity flapjack maker at the IHOP at your Natick at the Natick Mall. Come check it out. Uh, that's about it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I'm looking I'm on the website right now. There is a guy who is known as oh, there's a guy who. Uh, th- this guy, his name is Keon Young. He played Mr. Wu in the HBO series Deadwood. Okay. Um, and he was also played the voice of Storm Shadow in the G.I. Joe animated cartoon. <laughs> what are we doing here, people? I, what are we doing? I, we'll, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're going and we're doing a meet and greet. It's, it's with, the next town over from my office. Of course, we're, we're, we're going and we're doing a meet and greet with the cast of Land of the Lost. I'm telling you right now. No, we're that's not. What we're doing. No, we're not. Anyways. That's 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 the definition of scraping for news. So there's not much going on. We love Bruce and happy to see him. I can't wait to see him, but that's about it. All right, let's take a quick little break and uh talk to Bruce about uh what his next banana pancake flapjack recipe uh is and well he whether he'll be releasing that uh on the back of his new uh BK4 album. Hey guys, BK4 Flip the back of the CD cover. Chocolate chip flapjack recipe. All yours. We're back. And Bruce, uh, breaking news, he's introducing the new Land of the Lost flapjack. (laughs) It's going to have little mini dinosaur nuggets mixed into the pancakes. He's very excited to do that. Um, (laughs) Last time I had a couple nuggets. They were left over from my puppy. I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> they wanted me to go to that thing, but I told them I can't. Skid shitless little slee stacks. Really and by the nightmares. way, some more uh, some more Ace videos will probably I'll be releasing them probably weekly. So check them out. Go to our YouTube page and subscribe. I'll be dropping them there. <laughs> I'll be dropping a couple of things too if you don't hurry up. <laughs> Jesus, this is going right through me. What the fuck? <laughs> is there a hatch in the back of this spacesuit? It came in white. It ain't going out white. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> oh, anyways. Tom, we always do our March Madness Tournament. We were a couple months old. We did one when we first started out in 2019. This is the sixth incarnation of the March Madness Tournament. We've done one on the uh, makeup. We've done one on non-makeup. We've done one of Kiss albums. We Mm -hmm. did one on the set list. Mm Mm-hmm. We did an all around all kiss songs one, and now we're doing the ARC album review crew songs. So we just got out Diary of a Madman, which is technically the 50th album. Yep. And so we have enough songs, obviously. And on the 50th album released by the ARC side cast that we have, we decided to put our what we think which are the best songs and put them in a pool and see what comes out as the number one song that we've reviewed on ARC. Right. And we, we did try to make it so that every album was represented with at least one song. Obviously there's some legendary classic albums. So uh, a couple of albums have two songs and I could tell you right now, the kiss tournaments that we had in the past were obviously a blast, but let's be serious people. They were very predictable. Uh, you could at least predict the, the, the final four most of the time. I mean, sometimes I stole you, your love. Yeah. It's sometimes a, you could even predict the winner. I could tell Dr. you right love, now. Love fucking yeah, love I gun, could, uh, yeah. rocker all night. And I could, I can tell you in. right now, I don't think there's going to be any, uh, come on and love me versus seduction of the innocent in this bracket here. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this is going to be a really, really, really interesting turn i mean even the first round matchups are going to be great and again a lot of those first round matchups in the kiss brackets they were fun but they were kind of predictable these this is going to be interesting because we're dealing with grunge classic rock metal hard rock hair metal everything so this is going to be a ton of fun and i in, in terms of predicting this i have no idea first though we have to thank somebody 
and we need to thank our sponsors. So the sponsor this year is going to be Gene Simmons Money Bag Sodas. That's right. They are kind enough to once again sponsor us. They are going to give the winner of the brackets a shipper, which is a blend of four different variety packs of Gene Simmons soda, Mm -hmm. and deliver that straight to you. Yep. In addition to that, you will get your Shout It Out Loud cast t-shirt of your choice. Mm -hmm. That will also go to the winner. Yep. And how does this work? The same way as it ever worked in the first time. So this is based on the March Madness basketball brackets. Tom, please let everybody know how we're scoring this. Okay, so the first round is going to be one point. Second round, correct answers will be worth two. Third round will be worth four. The next round, the regional finals will be worth eight points. The final four will be worth 16 points. And the correct winner overall is 32 points. Now, in the past, the thing that separates the winners and the losers from these brackets are always been the early rounds. Because... It gets very easy to predict the the Sweet 16, the Elite 8, the Final Four. Those early rounds is what has always separated the winners of this tournament from the people who can't compete. This is going to be very different, I think, because I think every round is going to be very important, including the Final Four, because this is not, again, kiss hits from you know their entire catalog. So this is going to be very, very difficult, I think. So one of the things we want to emphasize with you guys oh god say it again like we do every year you need to fill out the brackets correctly you need to email them to us that's the only way we're accepting them i want to make that crystal clear we will post that it's on the bracket when we post it on our social media it says email your bracket okay so in order to win the prize you need to email them to us. And that's our email. We say it all the time on the show. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. We're going to push this so that everybody sees this and you have to get it in quickly. If you get it in after the old start, it's too late. Now, many of you don't really care, but, and you just want to put it up on social media. If you put it up on social media, but don't email it to us, we're going to be sticklers. I'm not dealing with this stuff and neither is Tom. We're not going to go through all our social media accounts and see if you really put it up before. We only are counting brackets for the, like the prizes. Only if you email it to us at shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. You'll see when you print out the bracket, it'll say it on there. Okay. But if you want to play along and have fun and you just want to show it on social media, please put it up on social media, get more people involved. But you have to use the hashtag ARC Song Madness. That's the hashtag we're using this year. And put it up and have some fun. And let's get the more people playing, the more fun it is. And I will also reiterate this on all of our social media so that there's no confusion that in order to compete for the prize, it has to be submitted via email. The other huge thing in terms of filling out the bracket correctly and thoroughly and completely, write the fucking song title if you fill out your bracket one eight four five eight three two no, you know what you know what I, you know what i think we're gonna do i think we might publicly shame you on social media if you do that because i could tell you right now if you try doing that on an espn bracket or anything like that an office pool bracket it ain't working and it's not going to work yeah, with us we're, we're, and the reason we're getting so animated about this is because this is our sixth year doing it and it's fun but Jesus Christ, Mike. <laughs> There's always a couple lazy fucks that think we're going to do the fucking work for you. Do you know how it is to run this fucking podcast, to live our lives, raise our kids, go to work, fucking coach, do all the things that we fucking do? In the meantime, Johnny Cool Balls is too fucking lazy to put the song titles in. He wants us to look them up so he can win. You know what I'm going to do is look up your asshole as I put my foot in there. Because I'm not fucking doing it for you. Or as Dr. Dre would say, or MC Ren, put my foot in your ass, you'd be shitting size 10. Prisoner or hostage. 
You should have covered your motherfucking head like an ostrich, Tom. But anyway, that look, we love this, but this is a lot of work. But it's also a lot of fun. It's a lot of okay. fun. But it's a lot of work. Make it easier for everybody. Yep. Make sure you're sharing the your brackets on social media. Hashtag ARC Song Madness, right? Yep. Tag us. Yep. Put it and on the- Facebook, Instagram, fucking uh TikTok, whatever you want to. Put it anywhere you'd like. However, if you want to enter to win the prize, you have to email it to us at shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Now, the other cool thing about this is I really think and I'm really hoping that this really expands and kind of goes viral through the music fans out there on social media because this is not Kiss. There's not a single Kiss song in here. This is all just rock bands that we know and love. Some you might love more than others. Some of you, you might hate than others. Okay, this episode drops every Saturday on Saturdays like it always does. So it drops on Saturday the 23rd. The polls start on Thursday the 28th. They always start on the Thursday to give people a chance to fill out their brackets, to listen to the episode, etc. Once the polls start, they're going to be running feverishly pretty much every day until we get a winner. So it's going to be pretty exciting. And the other thing, you'll also be able to keep up with all of this on our website at shoutoutloudcast.com. There'll be a printable bracket there. You'll be able to vote. Granted, if you vote on our website, there are Twitter links that'll take you to our Twitter, so you can do that. And they'll also be updated after each round, so you can kind of have fun and keep track of what's going on and go back and look and see what's going on, because we know social media moves fast. So as we post updated brackets, if you don't see it right away, it's probably going to be gone. You can always refer to our website. We're going to keep that up to date as well. Yeah, again, have some fun with this, guys. That's that's yep. what it's there for. Yep. All right. So what we're going to do now is do what we usually do, and we're going to preview these uh, brackets and Let's uh, do it. go through it. So we came up with the terms uh, to to name the brackets, we asked our Patreon family members, and they dropped the ball as always. No, we had somebody come up pretty close with this. I will say this was actually kind of my idea, and then we did have a Patreon kind of kind of touch on this idea. So we kind of combined both and came up with the, with cities, famous music cities for our brackets: Boston, L.A., Seattle, and London are the four brackets New York. this year. Now you know it's going to be great. I said, well. Why do you have a Dawkins song in the Seattle bracket? They're not from Seattle. Okay, let me be clear. The brackets do not mean that the band in that bracket is from that fucking town. Can't you see how much fun we're already having with this bracket? All we've been doing is yelling at people. (laughs) Come on, let's make this fun, you stupid idiots. (laughs) I'm a people person. That's exactly what I was just going to say. But yes, uh, we decided to do Boston and fuck New York. Oh, that's uh, not they happening. don't, they don't get in there. So Boston is the Northeast, uh, city. So what we're doing is the four brackets. Again, you, if you don't know and you're in Australia and you're not familiar with how brackets work, Google it. college <laughs> basketball, you're going to have to look this up. If you submit stuff that, you know, just doesn't make sense, it can't be entered. Right. Okay. So now let's start with Boston. So number one goes against 16. Master of Puppets, Metallica versus Come Clean by Heat. Uh, I mean, let's be serious. I mean, I know there's Heat fans out there. In the history of every tournament we've ever done, we have never had a 100 to zero on a Twitter poll. I'm not saying this is going to be the first one because I know that there's going to be Heat people out there. And there's probably going to be people that are going to try to support it and prevent it from being bullied by Metallica. But you never know. Yeah, the thing about this one is every album has to have a representation. So correct, come clean from that's right from that heat album. Yep. So then the next one is uh, let's go with two versus fifteen, and that's Highway to Hell from ACDC versus Damaged by the Winery Dogs. And again, this on its face, public majority is going to go ACDC, but you know, there's a ton of people that love the Winery Dogs, like me. So. I mean, I'm not going to try to fool you into saying the damaged can compete, but I don't know. Who knows? And pay attention when Tom puts up the polls. He'll usually try to tag the band. Oh, yeah. Because I get I get that some people might look at the bracket and be like, runaway. That could be 15 different bands. Yep. And if I I will, I will. Yeah, I will either tag the band if they have an official Twitter page. And if not, I will hashtag the band name. So you'll know who's who. Yeah. And you can usually tell because, I mean, we've done 
an album by this. So it's not going to be a song from something we've never done. No. And we've only done 50 albums on ARC. So, yep. All right. Let's go to number three. And number three is what, Tom? So we get the three verses of the 14, Tom Sawyer by Rush versus Lonely is the Night by Billy Squire. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Now, this is interesting here because in the past with the kiss brackets, a 14 would probably never have a chance against a three. It might get votes. I'm not saying that Lonely is the Night has a chance, but I think this is what I'm talking about in terms of this tournament. There's a ton of people out there that fucking hate Rush. Yes. <laughs> like <rough>. you. And <laughs> yeah. that love Billy Squire or that love classic 80s rock. And Lonely is the Night is that type of song. So I think this is a really good example of the way this bracket and, is. And we obviously try to do it based upon what you guys think. Like for a while, Find the River was my favorite out, al- my favorite song from REM's right. Automatic. Movie. I didn't even put it in there because nope. I know you guys, it, it just wouldn't, it's not that popular. Yep. So we try to make it like the accessible songs. Correct. That you guys will know and, and, and get and things and make this more fun, not deep cuts from albums yep. that we really like, but maybe you guys don't get so we're trying to do that so we get that you guys our listeners are really hair metal and classic rock focused but we're hoping other people jump in on the pool in songs you never know what could happen again who knows there is a lot of hate out there with rush so yep. who knows how far that'll go if you yep. get the right crowd rush would could win this tom yep. sorry could win this who knows that's, that's right yep. all right number four tom is what yeah next matchup right here is a classic 80s Hair metal, pop metal matchup number four, modern day cowboy Tesla versus Nobody's Fool by Cinderella. That's a four to 13. To me, that's a freaking coin flip. That's not a four to 13. That, that's interesting. A, interesting yeah. couple bands. One is less glammy yep. than the other. Yep. Both came out around the same time. Both had hit debut albums. So, yep. Great matchup. Uh, number five is what? We got number five, Back in the Saddle, Aerosmith, versus number 12, another Billy Squire song here, The Stroke. Two classics, two classic rock radio staples. Again, for me, coin flip. It's like something that's playing on WBCN in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> and that's two Boston guys in that yep. battle right there. Yep. All right, number six, Tom. Number six, Kiss of Death by Dawkins versus the number 11, Shake Me Cinderella. So Cinderella gets two songs in this bracket. Another good, another classic hair metal, pop metal matchup right here. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting is Kiss of Death is one of the few rarities had four people pick it as the number one song on an album. Exactly. Yep. All right, Tom, number seven. Number seven, we got Man on the Moon by REM versus the number 10, Runaway by Bon Jovi. So this is going to be interesting because two complete. Completely different bands, completely different types of music. And it's not Bon Jovi, You Give Love a Bad Name, right. or uh, uh, Living on a Prayer Bon Jovi. This is early Bon Jovi. So who knows? And, yep. you know, Man on the Moon is w- way more accessible to most music people, but not our hard rock fans. So who knows where that lands? And then the last category, Tom, is number eight and nine. Yep. Another matchup of. 80s titans here number eight talk dirty to me by poison number nine monkey business by skid row again coin flip who knows yeah i mean there is a lot of love for poison out there sadly uh (laughs) uh, but i I mean i know where i'm going with this but it's not up to us so what we usually do is that's the boston bracket yep just Kind of like uh, your your theory. What do you think is going to come out of here? I mean, I know number one is Master of Puppets, but Master of Puppets is Metallica. Master of Puppets is metal. There's a lot of people that don't like Metallica, that don't like heavy, hard rock thrash. You're not a huge fan of that. I mean, if I'm putting my money on this right here, I'm saying it's going to, I think Highway to Hell is probably going to come out of this bracket, and I think it's going to be fighting against skid row monkey business to be honest with you i think the oh, mo- i think the, really? i think wow. the, i th- the only because i think the skid row contingency is massive out there i'm just looking at what i see on social media i think okay. rush ha- rush has a rabid psychotic fan base and if enough retweets get out there you, you could see that you could see rush taking that over but i think i think acdc is pretty much the universally beloved song out of this bracket that kind of stretches yeah. genres 
Master of Puppets. If this was Enter Sandman, maybe. I agree. But this is Master of Puppets. You really, yeah. That's a hardcore Metallica fans. Yeah. So Agreed. I would say this. I believe Highway to Hell versus Tom Sawyer is going to be a fucking killer matchup. I think Me they'll too. match up, Me but I, I believe it's going to be Master of Puppets versus Highway to Hell, and I have no idea where it's going to go. But okay, that, so you no, think, let's see. Okay, okay, but let's see. I, that's what's, I, that's yeah. my prediction. One of those two te- songs I think will come out of it in the final four. Okay, let's go to L.A. All right, now one one verse sixteen. Okay, so number one is the Trooper by Iron Maiden. And number 16 is Forever by Y&T off of the Black Tiger album. Again, every album's getting representative here. So you take that for what it is right there with that matchup. I think, uh, I think it's going to be tough to knock the trooper off anywhere in this bracket, yeah, but we'll see. Exactly. Number two. So we got Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses at number two versus Loving You is a Dirty Jaw by Rat at 15. Who knows? Maybe this fatigue factor, but you know, I don't think I was. I don't know if there's that much fatigue. I was just going to say that it could be the fatigue factor, but sometimes it doesn't matter. The, the majority rule sometimes we'll see. Yeah. All right, Tom, number three, number three, we have let's go crazy by Prince. So our first Ooh. real pop song here versus number 14, smooth up in your bullet boys. Again, it's going to be which kind of fan base and which kind of musical fans are out there that are going to determine this winner. I mean, Smooth Up Indian is a classic, you know, hair metal staple. Let's Go Crazy is a legendary Prince pop song. I have no idea. No yeah. clue on this one. All right. Well, number four. Number four versus number 13. Here we go. Hotel California by the Eagles versus Poison by Alice Cooper. Now, what? Technically, two classic rock bands. Yeah, that's but true. But this is his hair metal stage. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough because both fan bases are very different, but they're both rabid. Alice Cooper fans love Alice Cooper, and the Eagles fans, I don't know. I don't know. Are, do Eagles fans use Twitter? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably not. So, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can see Poison knocking it off, honestly. Me too, unfortunately. Because it, as many fanatic fans there are, there's a small minority of hate, haters out there for the Eagles, yep. and they are very loud. Yep. All yep. right, Tom, number five. Number five is Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses, versus the number 12, 17 by Winger. I mean, two radio classics, two MTV classics. It's going to determine, you know, Sweet Child of Mine is obviously the more – legendary and more popular song i think it stands the test of time a hell of a lot better than 17 so we'll see about that all right number six tom number six another very very diametrically opposed matchup here yes number six shout at the devil motley crew versus the number 11 life in the fast lane eagles i love the eagles that's not one of my favorite songs and i think shout at the devil is going to stomp it I think it's absolutely going to bludgeon it. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Yep. Number seven. Number seven is Rock Me from Great White versus oh. number 10, When It's Love by Van Halen. I mean, I know people love Van Halen, but do they love that Van Halen? Yeah, exactly. Versus Great White's best song. Well, in my opinion, their best song. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's fucking interesting shit. And then the middle bracket, eight, nine. Yep. So another one couldn't be. Two further ends of the spectrum here. Number eight, <laughs> Killing in the Name of by Rage Against the Machine versus Finish What You Started. Van Halen, another one from OU812. Again, it's going to be which fan base shows up. Couldn't be Tom, more different. And, and depends on what mood you're in. It One is the angriest band in here. Yep. The other one is the smile. Smile. I was just going to say the smile. <laughs> just band happy band. people. So who's who's. Depends on the fucking mood of everybody. Who knows what's going to happen? Very true. All right. So what do you see coming out of this? Um, I, I honestly, this to me might be the juggernaut of the bracket here. I mean, you have uh, you when you have shouted the devil as a six. I mean, you got the trooper. Welcome to the jungle. Shout at the devil. Sweet child of mine. And then you got the wild cards like Prince. Let's go crazy. You know, Hotel California. What do you mean? Smooth up. India is not going to win. <laughs> No, I, I, I think this bracket, I think that this, I think this is a juggernaut right here, this bracket right here. I, yeah. I, I, th- I think it's going to be tough to beat the trooper, but I just think 
kind of like what I said about Metallica and Master of Puppets. Not everybody likes the Trooper and not everybody likes Iron Maiden. Welcome to the Jungle is played at every sporting event, every arena. Everybody pretty much fatigue, likes fatigue. Exactly. Fatigue. Correct. I've never heard anybody tell me about fatigue on the Trooper. But Welcome to the Jungle? Uh, right. You know. Very true. So, Very um, true. I, I would probably guess Welcome maybe versus the Trooper. And uh, that's where I see the final should get into the final four. Yep. All right, Tom, let's take a skip over to Seattle and see what's going on over there. All number right. Number one so we over got, there. Yeah. So we got the number one Unchained by Van Halen versus the number 16. It's not you by Hailstorm. I like Hailstorm. Great album. Good song. It's going up against Unchained. That's all I'll say. Yeah. It's going to get fucking stomped. Oh, yeah. Brutal. Uh, number two. Okay, another one. It's very different, but I think we know who's going to rise to the top here. Number two, Looks the Kill from Motley Crue versus 15, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. Arguably, B- B- Soundgarden's probably biggest song, not my favorite. but not one that mine either. No, one that really crossed into the pop culture consciousness, especially with the video and the constant radio play. It's a very accessible Soundgarden song. So, again, th- th- it's going to determine who comes out and retweets and who votes and see these, but it's going to be hard to knock off Motley Crue. Yeah. Number three, Tom. Yeah, another very different one here. Number three is Wood from Alice in Chains off the single soundtrack and Dirt. And that goes up against number 14, I Don't Believe in Love by Queensryche. I love them both. Two great albums, two great songs. I guess it's going to depend on what mood I'm in that time, that day when it comes time to vote. Yeah. Um, uh, that'll be interesting, right? Yeah, I think All so. All right. Well, let's go number four. Yeah, so we got a nice uh, grunge alternative matchup here. First one I think that we have. Number four, Inter- Interstate Love Song from Stone Temple Pilots versus These Days by the Foo Fighters. These Days is not a household song. It's not v- very you know well-known. Interstate Love Song is just like a classic. I mean, it's even on classic rock radio. Been around for 30-plus years, so that that's that's a big one there. Number five. Uh, another great grunge matchup, two of my all-time favorite songs by two of my all-time favorite bands. Number five, Alive from Pearl Jam versus number 12, No Excuses. Allison Chains off of the Jar of Flies EP. Fantastic friggin' matchup, and it's going to crush me to have to pick one of these. I can tell you that right now. All right, Tom, number six. Number six, another interesting matchup here. We get You Could Be Mine from Guns N' Roses versus the number 11, Vaseline. Stone Temple Pilots. I fucking very, love very, that. Very interesting matchup there. And You Could Be Mine is a great song. It's just not one of my favorite Guns and Songs, but I love Vaseline, man. Yeah, anyway. me too. Me too. All right. All right, seven. Number seven, If You Want Blood, You Got It from ACDC versus the number 10, Until It Sleeps, Metallica. A lot of people aren't a big fan of that kind of era of Metallica. If You Want Blood, classic. I don't know. We'll see. But you got ACDC versus Metallica again. All right, Tom. Last one. Eight versus nine. The eight versus nine. Two of my favorite bands. Two of my favorite songs. Number eight, Even Flow by Pearl Jam versus number nine, Welcome Home Sanitarium. Another Metallica Master of Puppets representative here. Telling you, depends on my mood. Depends on the day of which one I want to hear because I... Love them both. So again, it's gonna to be me, tough. Gonna be to tough. Me, it's even flow, and I like that song "Sanitarium" by Metallica. But I'm yep. telling you right now, "Sanitarium" is gonna curb stomp it. Oh, I agree. Our listeners are not grunge fans, unless this gets out into more of a viral kind of uh, atmosphere. All the grunge shit are gonna get their heads kicked in. Well, between I, that's why I'm hoping that we get a. I mean, I know the Kiss stuff was one thing, but I'm hoping we get a a shit ton of retweets and this really spreads out and variety amongst, people, um, amongst yeah. the rock and music fans and really makes these interesting. But yep. uh, I mean, generally speaking, you might be right. We'll, we'll see. Yep. Uh, so, who do you see coming out of this? I, I just I think it's going to be it's going to be very very difficult to knock off Unchained. It's a beloved song by a beloved band from that that classic era i mean looks that kill for me is is just legendary on so many levels but it's motley crew it's hair metal it's a band that not everybody likes i mean unchained is a hard rocking song it's not like super accessible 
I mean, you got a ton of gr- classic grunge in there. This is a heavy, I mean, it's a Seattle bracket. You got Even yep. Flow Alive, No Excuses, Interstate Love Song, Vaseline Wood. I, I, I would love to see some of those songs go far. I, I, I just, I think it's going to be really impossible to knock off Unchained. Come on, Tom, give us a break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be Unchained versus Looks That like Kill. And I think yeah. Unchained's going to walk away with this. Yeah, probably. Tom, last bracket, London. Okay. Uh, so we told you that every album was going to be represented that we've reviewed on ARC. So the number one photograph by Def Leppard versus the number 16, When I See You Smile by Bad English. <laughs> and that is all I will say. That's a number one song, Tom. Just got to say. I know. It was and it's a number s- charts. And it's also a number 16 seed. <laughs> so. Tom, number two. Two different genres of metal, two different eras. We got number two, Crazy Train from Ozzy versus the 15, Hail to the King, Avenged Sevenfold. I like both those songs, driving guitar on both of them. Yep, good stuff. Yeah. Um, Three. Two of your favorites from two of your albums. Number three, Won't Get Fooled Again, The Who versus 14, Don't Break My Heart Again by White Snake. Classic White Snake there. Yeah, I I love both those songs. Don't break your yep. heart is gonna get his fucking head kicked in. Oh yeah, it'll get <laughs> it'll get it'll get pummeled. <laughs> number four. Another appearance by White White Snake at number four, Slow and Easy versus 13 Heaven Tonight by Ingve. Woo! There is that fucking rainbow JLT Ingve Deep Purple Black Sabbath and uh White Snake fucking contingency where all these band members fuck each other and end up in all these other fucking bands together that's why i find it interesting with those two coming up against each other yeah that's gonna be a good matchup it's gonna be a good matchup yeah all right let's go to number five quite a matchup here we have number five limelight from rush which in my opinion should be way higher than a five seed but that's okay versus number 12 devil inside in excess Ooh. Yikes. Very different. Very yeah. fucking different. So different. Not yeah. even on the same planet. Yep. Yep. One song is catchy. And it's got a great hook and stuff. And the other one's by Rush. I I, I knew it. that was such a layup where you were going with that. <laughs> I, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. <laughs> your song is going to kill my song. I'm not. I know it. I, oh, because I, the, the Rush Tards will infiltrate Twitter and take over for this. Part. That's right. Number six, Tom. Wouldn't it be great if it was Tom Sawyer versus Limelight for the championship? If that happens, what are you going to do? I'm going to leave <laughs> ARC and leave it to you. <laughs> oh, okay. you and the Rush Tards can have a side cast called Rush Tards. I would love to have that. But anyways, and you we'll know what's going to happen? There's all these idiots. Oh, Tom, you want to be I'll be your fucking partner for this Rush podcast? No. Tom, nope. you don't want to be a podcast, have a podcast with a listener? No. <laughs> I love you guys, but no. Don't you love that? Love that? With like, yeah. Well, I, I listen to podcasts. Can I be your guest host? Yeah. Well, well guess what? I played football at Division Three Stonehill. Can I play <laughs> fucking left tackle for the Pats? I'm I not co- saying it's hey. the same thing. Relax, people. Hey, Bruins, I coach at JV <laughs> High School. <laughs> I saw the coach is a little ill back there. Do you need me to run the fo- the power play? I'll get on the bench. Yes, that's right. We are comparing ourselves to professional athletes. Hey, uh, Pasta, what are you doing, man? You got to go in the corner on that slap shot. What are you doing? Pasta, don't you know I coached a JV <laughs> team? It took the, I took them to Hooters. God damn it. Yes, I took my team because I had one player. For three years, coach, if we win, can you take me to, can we go to Hooters? And yes, we went to Hooters. Yeah, that's why you're the coach of the year, brother. That's right, motherfucker. Yep. Right. Chair number two. Be ready in a minute. <laughs> All right, Tom. <laughs> number six. We're laughing, but we know who's going to win this. Number six is flying high again from Aussie versus number 11, the final countdown by Europe. I'm telling you, final countdown is going to win this. I think Jay from the Hook Rocks. You look disheveled. We'll have a stroke. We'll we'll be physically ill if even if he just sees that this is in the poll, getting any points. Oh, he, the fact that it's an eleven seed will give him a hemorrhage. Oh, he he is violently opposed to this song. I don't know what Europe ever did to him, but he fucking hates them. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, Tom, number seven. All right, another matchup of Zeus oh. albums. 
Oh. Number seven, I don't know by Ozzy versus number ten, since you've been gone from Rainbow. I don't know where to go on this one. Oof. Love, love them both. What a bracket! Yeah, uh, it's like watching two of your kids play against each other. Yep, you don't yep. know who to root for. Yep. Tom, let's end this bracket with eight and nine. Another great matchup here. Number eight, Rock of Ages, Def Leppard. Number nine, Baba O'Reilly, The Who. A battle of eras. Yeah. 70s great big hit, 80s big rock hit. Yep, I agree. It's going to be crazy. What do you see coming out? Um, I think it's really going to be difficult to topple Crazy Train. I just, I think that just had even the people that don't like hard rock and metal. I'm going to say the same thing that I said about Welcome to the Jungle. It's played in every football stadium, sports arena. Everybody knows it, loves it. It's just got such mass appeal. I, I think I think that's the one that's going to come out of here. It, it's it's going to be tough to beat that, in my opinion. Against who? I don't know how. Uh, See, I'm not sure about photograph because I think there's fucking a lot of fatigue, and it's an older big hit. Yeah. So I'm looking. I I, I don't want to start breaking down the entire bracket, but I'm looking at something like if photograph makes its way to limelight. Photograph versus limelight. Like that, I am so saddened that I think Limelight is going to go up against Crazy Train. I'm telling you, I think that's where it's going to go. That, yeah, I, that wouldn't shock me, right? That would, that I, I feel like me. that's going to be it. Well, that shock me. That's it for the brackets. That's our bracket preview. Remember, once again, if you don't fill out the bracket and email it to us, it won't count. We will if come you to your put house it, and kill you. Yeah. If you put it up on social media and then you come complain to us later, hey, I get the most points. Doesn't matter. You never emailed it to us. You got to email it to us in order for it to count. However, please have fun with this. Load it on fucking threads, uh, TikTok, Facebook, our loudcasters group on Twitter. Whatever you want, load it and let's get the conversation going. Let's have fun. The more that join in on this, the better. In order to win the prizes, you got to email it to us, though. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. If you don't fill it out properly, you miss stuff. There's no like we have to guess what you would have put in there. It doesn't work. Everything has to be filled out properly. If you don't know, ask somebody. But please, if you don't don't know, now you know. Yeah, please don't ask us. We're, we're going to be busy enough trying to figure this all stuff out. Do your best. Have some fun with this. And uh, good luck to everybody. And uh, thank you for uh, jumping in on this. It's going to be great. It's going to be fucking awesome. Can't wait. This is going to be a lot of really interesting polls here. Tom, what we do next is we go to question of the week. Do you have one? Yes. Our question of the week is brought to the great Shout It Out Loudcast Hall of Famer, the Tony the Taxman Barone of abcpainc.com. Zeus and I have used him for our personal taxes, our business taxes. He is the man, and it doesn't matter which of the 50 states you live in, he can take care of you. He is amazing. We're speaking from experience. Visit his website at abcpainc.com. There are links there to show you all the services that he provides, whether you need individual things taken care of, business things taken care of. There's all kinds of links you can click on to send him a message, to call him, et cetera, et cetera. He is the man. Please check him out at abcpainc.com. Tony the Taxman Barone, we love him. Please check him out. And our question of the week comes from one of our longtime fans and listeners who we actually got to hang out with in New York City and got our picture taken with at Madison Square Garden. And that is Peter Wexler, Swede in New York. Nice. So he's got a great question. He says, here's my question of the week. I'd be interested to know which Kiss albums did you guys purchase with high anticipation at the record store on the same day that they came out? On my end, it was Lick It Up, Animal Eyes, and Revenge. Here is to your continued podcasting success. Peter Wexler, Sweden, New York. Peter, first of all, thank you for the question, and it was great meeting you and getting our picture taken with you. It's a good question, Zeus. What do you think? What do you remember? When I really got back into Kiss by that point in time, yeah, I only remember as a young teenager in probably junior high or something, yep. getting crazy nights like from the circus magazines okay. and everything else that I ran to buy it that day it came out. Okay. Okay. Maybe I did for other albums later on, 
but crazy nights because originally it was going to go who dares wins. Yes. I remember seriously going out because I was buying hit paraders and circus and I could see when it was coming out. Before that, I was too young. As- By the time I got back into Kiss, Asylum was already out. Yep. Yep. So that was okay. the first one that I got into. Okay. Wow. For me, I have two distinct memories of running to the record store to buy the CDs. That is when Psycho Circus came out, because at the time, I believe that it was the original four reunion. This is going to be great. And the second one is when Sonic Boom came out, because that's when Walmart did their big kiss promotion with the fucking M&Ms and the Mr. Potato Heads. And it was the first <laughs> album with uh, Tommy and Eric. So I remember those distinctly like. Like literally today's the day I'm running to the store to get those. And, Ooh. uh, yeah, they were both kind of disappointing, but it's, if you want to hear more about those, go listen to our review episodes. But, uh, Peter, great question, buddy. Thank you for the question and for the continued support. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. Tom, tell people where they can find us. Websites, the best place, shout it out loudcast.com that you can find all of our episodes, the shout out loudcast episodes, album review crew. We just dropped diary of a madman. Thank you. Patreon. Our Dorm Damage episode, Zeppelin Chronicles, everything is there. You can comment on the episodes, tons of links there, links for our Amazon shopping page, our merch, our social media, our Patreon, everything is there. And you can also send us messages directly from the website. We get those in the form of an email, or you can just use our email directly, shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. If you want your question of the week to be read, you can send them via email. We keep them all in a little hot here and pull one out each week and then eventually at the end of the year we have our mailbag so please do that shout out loudcast at gmail.com we read every single email that you send again we can't get to everyone during the episode but we do read them all so please continue to send them and of course our social media twitter facebook instagram youtube tiktok we're trying to be active on all those please follow us if you haven't we're very active and of course our loudcasters shout out loudcasters facebook group which is hovering around 12,000 members right now. And it's a ton of fun over there. So please check that out. And another thing, our Spotify playlists, they are all up to date. Any episode that involves a top 10 or a draft or anything like that, we now have a corresponding Spotify playlist for those. So when you search for us, search for our profile, not the podcast page. So those are a lot of fun, a way to kind of interact with the episodes. And, of course, we always like to say we're part of the Pantheon Podcast Network of Shows. Yeah, Tom, people can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And they can find us on threads, TikTok, as you mentioned. Uh, we're getting a little bit more active, especially on YouTube. We're putting up video clips uh, of interviews. We're starting with the A stuff. We put one up uh, recently before even the show or episode started. This was behind the scenes, Ace logging on. People got a kick out of it. It's yep. uh, getting a lot of comments and views. So we're going to probably continue putting up some more of those, and you can see them and see the actual videos. But go on to our YouTube channel. Subscribe there. It, it's a big help to us, okay? And make sure that you give us one of those five-star child reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Tom's already mentioned the Spotify playlist. Anywhere you can give us a five-star review, it's a big help. Let us know. If we see it, we'll definitely give you a shout-out and read it uh, on the show. Uh, Tom, uh, we always want to give the website another little bit of a plug. Shout it out loudcast.com. Shout it out loudcast.com. There, you can go and get our merch is available there. You have a new Ace Fraley t-shirt available. You'll have a uh, Ace Cult shirt, as should I say. Uh, there's more, uh, our Amazon store, uh, all our rankings, everything you can imagine about this show and how we rank things and how we put things, you'll find it on the website. You can see photos of our friends and people that we've had on as guests. And if you see somebody like we had Ahmed on last week, you just go to the picture of Ahmed. You can press that and you go right to his actual website and get information on him. So that's a big thing. And also you can find the loudcasters page where anybody that's wearing any loudcaster gear, if they have a photo and they want to send it to us, I put it on that segment and you can uh, check yourself out and uh, make sure you, if you send it to me, you give me a uh, permission to put it up and I will do that. Uh, Tom, what we usually do is we end on famous last words. Do you have any? I don't need a reason to get crazy. 
I'm getting crazy and that's enough. Show me something strange and make it stranger. I swear the danger runs in my blood. Settle the fuck down, Paul Stanley. Yeah, Stanley Eisen needs to relax with those lyrics right there. All right, Tom. Oh, the heat is on. (laughs) And my back's against the wall. You know, it's tough to be strong in a world that makes you crawl. Relax. Paco Pablo Stanley, relax. Pico Chris. What happened, what happened to Pico Chris? We haven't heard from him in a while. <laughs> Pablo Stanley. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, Tom, Loudcasters, Kiss Army, thank you. Guys, you're the best. Thank you so much for all the support. Patreons, everybody out there, Loudcasters. This tournament's going to be a blast. Can't wait to see where we go with it. Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Hit the music. What I'd like now is for all you fat, out of shape, worldwide kiss cards to keep the noise down while I show your ladies what a real sexy man looks like. Listen, all you people out there sitting on rented furniture, settle down. Cut the music. Anybody seen Richie? Anybody know why Richie did Bobby Lupo?